Okay, so let, let's look at the opaque uh, protocol, which is asymmetric PAKE protocol. And PAKE stands for Password Authenticated Key Exchange. And really the objective is for Bob to be able to prove his password, Alice to be able to prove uh, her uh, identity in some way, but for them not to actually pass. Start again. Sorry, I need to start again. Okay, let's let's look at the opaque uh, protocol. So opaque stands for asymmetric uh, opaque protocol, where opaque is password authenticated key exchange. And the objective is really for Bob and Alice to end up with the same encryption key at the end of it, but for both Bob and Alice to identify themselves correctly without either of them revealing their secret information. So Alice may have a secret identifier for Bob and Bob may have a secret password, but then uh, they do some sort of oblivious transfer of those details and end up with the same uh, key at, at the end of it. So this overcomes the complexity of uh, PKI, where both of them would have to have public and private keys. Okay, so here is the problem that we have with passwords. So in this case, uh, we have a user and uh, Alice has a password here. So normally what happens is that uh, we will take some salt and we will take the hashed value of the password and we'll store that as a record. The problem with this though is that the salt is stored along with the hash value. So if Eve gets hold of this record here, all she has to do is to be able to look at a standard dictionary or even uh, brute force and add the salt on and she can actually recover Alice's uh, password. So is it possible for Alice not to actually send her password to, to Bob? The SRP is one such protocol where uh, we have a stored secret here and we have another secret over here and there is some uh, exchange of the parameters and we will end up with the same encryption key after this. Speak2 uh, enhanced this where we can pass secrets on either side and end up with the same password. So the way that Spake does this is to be able to create a hash of the password on either side and then delete after use. And then after this, we have a secret key which can then validate Alice to Bob and Bob to Alice. But obviously in this part here, uh, it is possible for Bob to see Alice's secret. With Opaque, what we have is that we have a client secret such as a password for Alice, and then we have a, a secret on the server, in this case, a salt or a, a, a some sort of key which identifies uh, Alice. And then we have a registration of the password, and after that, uh, we have authenticated access between Alice and Bob. Okay, so at the core of this is what's called an oblivious pseudo random function and it uses uh, uh, Diffie Hellman methods to be able to pass uh, the values across between uh, Alice to the other side and Bob to the other side too. In the end they should hopefully end up with the same uh, encryption key which they can then use for secure communications. So PAIC was first uh, published at Eurocrypt 2018 and it was published uh, by these authors here. It has since been developed through the Crypto Forum Research Group with uh, one of the authors who has drafted uh, the opaque, asymmet opaque asymmetric opaque protocol and which is focused on making sure that it can be integrated with a TLS type infrastructure. 
So here is the basics. So let's say that, that Bob is the user and Alice is the server. They both agree on uh, a, a generator value G. Okay, so we're going to be using discrete logs. And if you remember discrete logs, we have something like that. And that will equal G to the power of X plus Y, if you remember. And G to the power of X to the power of Y is equal to G to the power of X, Y. Okay, so we'll explain it as a discrete log problem but it can also be easily modified to an elliptic curve uh, implementation. So initially, uh, Bob will have a secret password. We take a hash of that, so we'll take a SHA-256 uh, password hash. See, his password is QWERTY. We'll take a SHA-256 and that becomes the value of, of X. He will also have an identity such as Bob, that's his login name. And now what I'll do is to be able to create a private key. So a private key. And then to create his public key, he takes G and raises it to the power of his private key to be able to create his public key. So this will be the key that he uses for this authentication that he will have with uh, Alice. Okay, we're using discrete logs. In an elliptic curve type uh, method, we would use uh, 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 the addition of uh, these points, the generator uh, point. But we're using the elliptic curve, uh, we're using Diffie-Hellman here, so we're using discrete logs. Okay, all along uh, we'll do the mod of a P, so there's a prime number also agreed between Bob and Alice, and every operation is done mod P. On the other side, uh, Alice will have her user key. So this will be the identifier for Bob on the on her records. She then creates her own uh, server name, IDS, and then we'll create a key pair here with her private key and her public key. So this is unique to this session. So every single session she can create uh, a new key for this. Bob sends his ID, his uh, public key that he's created, and then he takes G and raises it to the power of X. X is his secret value. Because of the power of discrete logs, it is not possible for Alice to be able to determine the value of X because it's such a large uh, value that's created. Then Alice returns back her the name of her server, our public key that she wants to use and we'll take her secret and do a G to the power of, of Y. Again, Bob can't determine what Y is because G to the power of Y mod P is a difficult problem to find the value of Y. Now, uh, Bob uh, creates a value of D, which is a hash of G to the power of X and also the server uh, name that Alice has provided. On the other end, uh, e, uh, Alice calculates E, which is her G to the power of Y, and takes uh, Bob's uh, identity and hashes them together. Then uh, we take G to the power of Y, multiply it by the public key to the power of E, and all of that to the power of, of this. So Bob knows that, he knows that, and uh, he knows the uh, other things there. So he's just received that from there, and he will be able to uh, then calculate that. And in the end, that should be the same as what uh, Alice has generated. So here is the method here. Okay, so there's the key pair being created, and we send those values over, and then Alice sends those values over. Then uh, we'll get uh, this calculation here, and this calculation here on the other side. So uh, Bob takes these values here. Okay, 
centimeter. And then I will raise that to the power of this value. And then it will take a hash of all of that together. Because our public key here is g is g to the power of this uh, privileged uh, user key here, then uh, we can then uh, perform this substitution. Sorry, this should be the server. Okay, so uh, once we multiply all this out, remember that g to the power of x to the power of y is equal to g to the power of x, y. We end up with these terms here. And then on the other side, we'll get these terms. And what we see is that that value is the same as that one. That value is the same as that one. This one here is the same as that. And then this one here is the same as that one. So both Bob and Alice will end up with the same uh, shared key. And even though it's not possible for either side to determine the values of x and y. Okay, so here's uh, some code here that shows that. Uh, so there's the initial uh, creation of the, the key. Uh, we then have Bob sending this uh, message here to Alice. Alice then sends this back uh, using her uh, key there and then in the end the user is registered uh, here. We can then authenticate uh, the user with the correct password. So in this case we've used the, the right password and we should be able to authenticate. If we change the password and try to authenticate, hopefully it will show us that we cannot uh, authenticate the user. Okay, so let's run some code. So here's the code here. Uh, so we're just deriving it from this site here. And if we run it, there we go. So we can see that uh, the user has authenticated with the correct password. But then when we use the wrong password, then the user is not uh, authenticated from there. Okay, so that's provided an outline of uh, opaque.